You know, the other thing I'll point out, and this was a feature that came about with 10, is that any of the incidents, that, uh, excuse me, any of the templates that you create, uh, when you create a template, there's an option to say, let this be viewable in self-service. So if so, then the things that would be more end user friendly, like the old password reset, they can grab that. And then obviously the categorization, the description, the resolution, auto-populates for them just to make it even easier for them to use the self-service uh, functionality here. So uh, again, the, the, the biggest change in 10.1 is the flattening of the staff interface, the more modern look and feel. A lot of great new functionality in 10 if you, uh, if you have not gone there. And so with the new functionality and now the new uh, what I call user interface improvements in 10.1, you know, I think SDE is uh, is really a, a very modern, up-to-date product at uh, at this particular point. So the other thing that we wanted to do was to give you a little idea about some of those other enhancements that we had mentioned that we had worked with other customers to do, uh, as far as being able to to uh, to go out and do some things. So I'm just going to log in here, and I'm going to go over and. Uh, go in to uh, look at one of my change requests where I've, I've been designated as an approval. This is the digital signature piece, right? So I'm going to look at uh, a change request where I've been designated as, a, uh, as an approver on it. And so I'm a staff guy. I've gone in here. I've looked at it. I can see there's stuff behind the approvals tab because there's the, uh, the check mark there. So I've been asked to come in and be an approver here. So if I open up the approval form, and of course this is pretty standard for those of you who have seen this, as you know, we present you with a list of options. And if I want to come in and approve this one, again, to give this the extra layer of authentication that some compliance uh, rules require, if I go to save this ticket, it's going to uh, get me to verify that I'm who I say I am. So I'm going to, you know, authenticate back against my Active Directory uh, passage here. So I'm going to re-put in my uh, password there and submit it. And if I were successful in that match, then fine, it will go on. And as you can see in your detailed section here, we've indicated that we had approved it. Whereas if I had put in an invalid uh, password there, it would have denied the approval. Would have probably on an alert email that, uh, you know, something's awry in the uh, approval category. So again, a couple of customers had asked us to help them with that, and uh, that's uh, a nice way to get around some of those audit restrictions that perhaps have kept some of you from uh, using things like change management. And, and even though I, I use change management to demonstrate this functionality, anywhere you needed to have an approval that was uh, uh, digitally uh, uh, certified, be that be a purchase request, some type of particular work order, we could apply that feature because all we're doing is intercepting before an action can be written that we've got a, a rule that says we have to apply the, uh, the digital signature uh, rules to it. So uh, if you've got some situations like that, let us know and, uh, and we, can certainly, uh, we can certainly work with you there. So one of the other ones that we talked a little bit about was the uh, the ability to, to come in and, and kind of do a uh, do a mass update here, right? So I'm going to uh, get out of this guy for the second, and I'm going to talk about uh, you know how you might update multiple records uh, at the same time here. And again, I've got this one configured around a, I've got this one associated around a configuration item, but again, it could be any set of filters and and uh, and records that you wanted us to work with. But here what I said is, OK, I'm going to, uh, I want to find all service contracts that are out there under a particular service contract. And it's, uh, I've got one out there called Dell 2011. Because what I want to do is I want to update uh, something to do with all of those configuration items that happen to be associated with this query. And I just selected service contracts. So I'm going to add that as my query and then run it. And so it brings me back a list of all of the configuration items that, in this case, are attached to this particular service contract. So if there's something on each one of these records that needs changing, you know, without this little enhancement, you'd have to go in and open up each record individually and do that, whereas now I could go in and say, I want to change the part description or the warranty expiration date, or again, you tell us what values you want to find here, but maybe I want to 
you know, set all of these devices uh, to one and do a massive update to them all in one sequence, and I would be able to do that. And again, not just around configuration items or around, you know, whatever that we needed to uh, we needed to do there. And that would give you your uh, that would give you your updates. Or maybe I need to change my part descriptions, or as I mentioned, the the warranty expiration date. So it can be a a great little tool to use. Uh, uh, if you have that situation again, if you think something like that could help you out, or you run into situations like that, just uh, just contact Rightstar, and we'll be uh, we'll be happy to uh, to work with you on that. So let me modernize that down. Now the the uh, the third option that we you know we we talked a little bit about the HTML. You saw when I did that approval work order. Of course, I, that demonstrated a, a, an actionable uh, way of doing that. Uh, just to show you how we at Rightstar have used that occasionally is when when we get a new job with the customer, we you know we use SDE and we send you a an email notification that we're getting ready to do something, and you can see here and just sort of doing a normal text-based email to you, we actually do them in an HTML notification. As you can see, we can have labels, we can have grids. We can have it much more nicely formatted. Again, we can have actionable links on the form. So a, a very good way of doing that. I had a customer recently. Uh, they were uh, creating email notifications whenever they received in survey results. And the, the, the out-of-the-box survey notification was just pretty rough, right? It just aggregated all the data and kind of put it in a form. And, they wanted it to be in a little more professional looking format to forward to their executives. So one of the things we did was help them create, again, an HTML-based report, uh, a notification to include those survey results in a much more valid form out there.